Hey everyone, MV here at the OFAH Heritage Center. I'm standing in front of our beautiful Northwestern Ontario exhibit. Today's lesson is all about Ontario's owls. Owls are considered raptors or birds of prey as they use their sharp beak and talons to hunt. In today's lesson, we'll aim to answer five questions about owls. What species do we have here in Ontario? Where do they live? What do they eat? What adaptations do they have that help them to survive? And who is a night owl? Our first question is, what species of owls live in Ontario? Ontario provides habitat for 11 different owl species. There's the barn owl, which in Ontario, due to habitat loss, is considered an endangered species. The Eastern Screech Owl. Great Horned Owl. Snowy Owl. Northern Hawk Owl. Barred Owl. Great Gray Owl. Long Eared Owl. Short Eared Owl. Boreal Owl. And the Northern Sawit Owl. Our next question is, where do owls live? Owls occupy a variety of different habitats here in Ontario. From secondary growth forests, old growth forests, forest edge habitat and meadows, while the snowy owl lives in the Arctic tundra. Owls nest in a variety of structures, from trees and old cavity nests left behind by other birds, to nest boxes and wood piles. Our next question is what do owls eat? Any guesses? Owls are carnivores, which means they eat meat. And their list of prey species can include small mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and insects. The size of the owl determines the size of prey they hunt. And when food is plentiful, owls have been known to cache their food. Owls consume their prey whole. If their food is larger in size, they will break it up using their sharp beak and consume smaller pieces whole. Owls do not have a crop, so the food passes directly into its proventriculus which contains enzymes that begin to break down the food. Then it's passed into the gizzard. In the gizzard, the indigestible components of their prey is filtered out, like the fur, the bones, and the feathers. Several hours after eating, the indigestible components are formed into a pellet, which is shaped like the gizzard. It then travels back up into the proventriculus, where it will remain for another 10 hours and then be regurgitated. You can learn a great deal about an owl's diet by further examining the pellets they produce. Our next question is, what unique adaptations do owls have to help them survive? And I've got the mount of a barred owl here to help me point out those adaptations. First of all, their eyes. Owls have eyes on the front of their head. An owl can't move its eyes side to side like you or I because their eyes are tube shaped and fixed within their skull. Owls have incredible eyesight, especially at low light levels. And even though an owl can't move its eyes left to right, it can move its entire head around 270 degrees. Another adaptation that owls have is their sense of hearing. Owls ears are located on the sides of their head and they don't have the outer ear structure that you and I have, but rather are small holes covered by tufts of feathers. Some owl species, like the great gray owl behind me, 
have asymmetrical ear openings, which means the ear opening on one side is not at the same height as the other ear opening. Owls with this unique trait often have a special feather structure on their face, almost shaped like a radar dish, that helps direct the sound into their ears. And lastly, their feathers. Owls have very soft feathers to help muffle the sound of the air rushing over the wing. On the leading edge of their flight feathers, a comb-like structure helps to break up the air. Their soft feathers are not quite built for speed, but rather built to fly silently. Our final question is who is a night owl? Most owls are nocturnal, meaning they are active at night. But species like the northern hawk owl are most active during the day, and the word we use to describe this is diurnal. Some species are crepuscular, meaning they are most active at dawn and at dusk. But generally owls are adaptable, and their most active periods are linked to food availability and the seasons. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. And if you'd like to learn more, be sure to reach out and book a free question and answer session with one of our educators. And don't forget to subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.